Hello, my friends. How are you? My name is Leo Guzman. I'm an artist and art therapist. I am super happy to be here and share with you some love today. I'm actually going to be reviewing some art biz tips. Um, I've been an art therapist for about 16 years. Can't believe it's been that long. And I've been an artist all my life, but I actually started my art business. It's going to be seven years this summer. So six years in business, meaning that I actually pay taxes, right? So when you're first starting art as an artist, I know it can be very overwhelming, um, especially, you know, learning of where should I spend my time and how should I spend my energy? Oh, I got some people joining us. Hi, Janine. Hi, Maricela. I'm so happy you are here. So yeah, if you're joining us, um, go ahead and say hello where you're from and if you have questions along the way Please go ahead and ask I will try to get those back to you. And even if you watch the replay, it's all good so Just going back to why I wanted to give you some art biz tips because I know when you're first starting out It can be very overwhelming um, with life in general and trying to think about how can I you know, start my passion and turn it into a business. Um, I actually went to art school and learned how to make beautiful, amazing pieces of art, but um, they never taught me how to make money from my art. So it's, it's kind of like you gotta learn along the way. You know, you, you mess up, you take risk, um, but it's a journey definitely worth taking. So I just wanted to give you some 10 tips of where you should focus your energy. All right. Ah, so right now I am creating art, one thing of fo focusing my energy, but also being able to give back to you is, is really makes me happy. So I am super happy to, to be here. I wrote a blog about this, so you're welcome to check it out, and I'm going to um, just kind of get in more detail now. So last year in my art business, I actually created an online course, which has seven modules about Artist Thriving Guide. And so I put that on there, it's like seven weeks, every week you get um, um, basically the setup of how to like do your business, how to, to make your passion into actually sustainable um, money to, to bring in. And since then, um, I actually connected with artists that wanted more personalized sessions. So then I started um, offering um, coaching for creative. So this is just like 30 minute sessions of just diving in from wherever you're at and um, kind of tweaking and you know putting looking at where you can focus your energy to get that structure and consistency. So just for meeting with creatives, um, this is the 10 things that kind of kept coming up. Um, that's what I'm sharing with you. So if you want to head to my blog to see those 10, I'm gonna just go through them right now and we can dive in more. Okay, so the first one that um, I, I talk about on here is photographing your work especially if you're first starting out you might think that um, this is actually one of the, the biggest things that you want to spend your your attention on because yes you make something really amazing and then you're thinking about well how am I going to show this so that you can get into exhibits so that you can put it online so you can promote on your social networks, right? So photographing your work is really point, important. So I have a few tips here that I want you to think about as you're putting your things together, right? So on here, um, I have uh, taking a solid shot of whatever it is, right? So taking a full blown shot. So what I like to do is I go out to my patio, which is totally natural light. Um, I put up a, a tarp. I'll put the piece down and then I get on a ladder and I look down. Um, I have a new smartphone, so I'm able to use that. It has a really high resolution, but you can use um, a standard camera as well. So obviously you can get a photographer to do this, but I like to do things myself. So uh, phones are actually able to get really good images. So if that's what you have, you can use that. So from that large image looking down, I crop and edit that. And so you just have the the piece as a whole. So you're looking at that. And things that you want to look at is um, the resolution. So you, you want to keep, you know, send it and store it um, to yourself, like in an email that so you can put on um, your computer or somewhere safe. 
is either a high resolution image, which you can keep for yourself for printing, but also a low resolution images, because as you apply for shows or wanna put your artwork out into the world, you would like to have that low resolution because if you're sending something in an email, you don't wanna blow up their email box, right? With something huge image, you're sending them something small. Even exhibiting to like magazines and things like that, you might wanna start with that, the smaller image size. So keep that in mind. So some other tips to think about as you're photographing your work, as you're creating your work, um, is you know placing it somewhere so that a collector who would like your work can see it in a room to see how it would look, right? So for example, I have these shocker pieces and yeah, they're just like individual. I do sell them individual, but they look really amazing as a set when I put them all together because you can see how the colors resonate and things like that. So what I do is I set it up in a space and I take pictures of it um, in an actual room so that you could see how small, these are like cute little four by fours. So that's another way to think about um, creating images for your work. And also the other one that I think is really important is, because we're gonna talk about websites in a little bit, is having horizontal images and also vertical images. Because in different platforms, for example, Instagram is square, right? If you were to pin on Pinterest, it's, it's um, actually vertical, right? But on my website, I might have, um, I actually have a horizontal um, screen that flips, right? It's a rotating slideshow. So I need like three different ways to be able to exhibit my work. So think about that as you're photographing, like photographing your work of all the different ways that you can take from different angles and different shots, right? And also when I upload online galleries, they like to see different um, parts of the painting as well. So it could zoom in at a detail, they also like to see my signature. So from this piece, my signature, I don't know if you could see it from here, um, I'd have a, a zoomed in of just my signature as well. And they like to look at the back. I guess they wanna make sure that you're, you're clean on the back, I'm not sure. But those are some things to think about as you're photographing your work. All right, so as I said, if anything comes up that you have questions about, please go ahead and ask or share this information um, with your friends, right? Okay. I also included here um, social light lighting, which is really good because lighting is so important. Right now I'm in a natural light, I have lots of light coming into my home um, where I can take images, but you definitely want to be somewhere where there's a lot of natural light. Okay, moving on to your website. Um, I have a lot of artists ask me if they should have a website. And I would say, yes, it's super important because you own that platform. It's a great place to um, upload your images, always keeping it fresh. I've had my website for about five years um, and I'm constantly changing it. Right now I'm making a whole new series of work. So I'm gonna be like letting go of those pieces, taking them off um, and then refreshing it. So having a platform for your, your images is, is great because you can always take people back there to um, see your work, your, your newest things, and you can sell it. Um, it is an investment though. So that's what I say, it's an investment of your time because you're gonna to wanna to have those great images, um, images of yourself, images of your work, and you know really about your why, like what are you about? What is your artwork about? And you want your, art, um, your whole um, website to encompass that, right? So start looking at, if you haven't have, don't have a website, I'm just curious of the, of the artists that are here now, if you have a website. So if you don't have a website now, it's great to do your research and start looking at artists' pages that um, inspire you, you know, thinking about your own branding, about colors that you want, even your logo and things like that, right? So go ahead and do your research and um, you can start thinking about different platforms as well. I have mine on WordPress, which I love. I've used Squarespace, which was amazing too. I just felt it was a little bit more limited, but they're both really easy to use. Okay, moving on to number three is share your art. And I think this might be the scariest thing uh, of putting your out, art out, out into the world, right? 
Um, I think that the more that you fall in love with your own process and really love what you're doing, you stop to care about what other people think about your work. I think I cared too much at the beginning about like, oh no, what would people say? Um, and for me, I think that the more I'm having fun with it and the more I'm taking pictures and just documenting the process, it gets a lot easier of sharing your art. And what I found along the way from doing this, of uh, actually starting the art business, is, is that the more that I'm sharing my art, so like going out into my community, going out into Miami and, you know, putting it up at boutiques or salons or just, um, you know, doing street festivals or putting in galleries, the more that I'm finding people who resonate with my art, right? So I want to find my ideal client. I want them to, to find me, right? So that's the importance of sharing your art is so that you can start to find out who is going to like your work, who is going to resonate your, with, with your work, right? So that you can have more clients. All right, so Janine says that, um, that you did yours and it was a big challenge. I'm curious, uh, what platform did you use, Janine? Because, uh, you know, some are easier, some platforms are easier than others. I had to have someone help me out with my WordPress, I have to admit. But I did Squarespace on my own. So let us know which one was more challenging. Okay, so starting your email list. This is number four on my list here. Um, you know, with, when creating your art and putting it out there and finding your ideal client, this is really about creating relationships. So... Um, looking at um, the people that you already know is great to start off your email list. You can have a small number of people, but starting your email list is a great way to keep you fresh in people's minds. So that when they are looking for a gift or looking for something on the wall, it's a great way to let them know that you have a new piece of work, a new series, um, that you have an event coming up. These are all um, opportunities to reach out and say hello. Um, I used webs. Oh, I haven't heard of webs. Janine is letting me know which website that she did. And hey, Doris, I'm so happy that you're here. Okay, so just going off to your email list and how important the email lists are because um, I might meet somebody that does resonate with my work. I get their email, I put it on my list, I might send it out. It might not even be for like a year later that they're ready to even purchase art. Maybe they saw something and they weren't ready to, to buy it yet, but when they were, they came back to me and that's a great way to keep that relationship going, right? Okay, and Janine says, very hard to deal with, unfortunately, but it took so long to build, I just renew. Yes, um, oh, it's an American company. Okay, great. So that, that's really interesting. It is, um, and it's definitely an investment of your time and energy of putting the website together. So I'm gonna just go back to websites really quick. I, I actually have someone that I'm working with, coaching with, um, for creatives, and she asked me, should I do a website? Because she just got everything set up on her Etsy. And I, I, she needed a platform just to sell her work. So I was like, go ahead and set up an Etsy because you're doing jewelry and things like that. And she's like, should I do a website? And just where she was, because she was like, you know, just now creating images and, you know, you, and putting her work, putting it out there. I didn't think she was ready to like do a website because it is, it's an investment. You have to um, really kind of like hunker down because if you start it, you got to finish it. Right. And I mean, it probably took me, I think just starting up maybe like six months to like get it all together of like what I really wanted, how I wanted to organize. But it's, this is like, it's like a breathing thing. Um, it's constantly changing. I'm always updating. I just updated, um, some online classes. And so I wanted to have new images, um, because I refreshed the videos. So I just put those up. So it's like a breathing living thing on the web. It's like, it's your little space. Um, so you want to keep it fresh, right? And the more that you know how to use it, it's going to get a lot easier for you to change things up. So hopefully it'll get easy, easier for you, Janine. I hope so. All right. So I'm curious for those of you around here who have already started your email list. And if you haven't, I highly recommend, um, because you, if, even if you just had like an Instagram or your Facebook page, it's, 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 I mean, it's a, those are great platforms to, you know, show your work, but it's always like when you have that website, you have that landing page. Um, and with the email list, it's like I said, it's a, it's the great way to just 
be a refresher in, in, in your mind. So I would definitely recommend, I use MailChimp, which is um, amazing. All right. Okay. Number five is being consistent. Um, so no matter what you decide of how you're going to put your work out there, whether it's just on Facebook or whether it is um, on Instagram or doing your emails, whatever it is that you've decided to starting to show up, whether it is like reaching out to galleries, what is whatever's resonating with you at the time, just be consistent with it, right? So if you decide to do your emails, you know, just starting off, maybe like a once a month email that you can commit to and have that consistency to, to follow through. So consistency is, I mean, this is going through even your art practice of having that consistent art practice of really setting the time to, to create, right? Like putting it on your agenda, like I'm, I'm going to be do, doing this. Cause I know that when you're first starting out, you might be, you might have a full-time job or I don't know, you just might be super busy, right? But being able to structure your time and to have that consistency is going to, you know, those baby steps, they add up. Okay. And that just goes into balancing your time, which is next. Um, and I, and I put in, I used to consider my art as work, but it's really just play time. So when I organize my day, when I organize my week, I really look at the different elements of my life because I have a family. Um, I do practice art therapy um, and I want to take care of myself. I mean, that's like number one, especially number one this year. So like, how do I like be able to do it all? And part of, you know, taking care of myself is creating. It's part of like my mental health <laughs> um, practice. So, because I know that when I have days when, you know, several days when I'm not creating, I get a little grumpy and I have these ideas that just need to get out and that satisfaction that I feel when I'm creating, that's what I'm going for. I just want to be satisfied. So, but just looking at the overall picture of that balance, I'm looking at, um, you know, exercise, eating well, sleeping well, having fun, um, bonding with my family, all of that together is is what's gonna have you making even better art. So just looking at yourself like as a whole. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Ginny because she just ruined me again. Um, I have lots of butterflies about products and pricing. Okay, thank you for bringing that up. And if anyone else has like some sort of resistance or you know the butterflies are coming up in certain areas, just let me know because um, I actually discussed that on here talking about a body of work and then I'm going to go into pricing. So with a body of work, um, being consistent of, you know, creating something, I, I, um, I have lots of different series of work. Sometimes I'm really into hearts, uh, anatomical hearts or brains or the moon, I have like a moon series. Uh, right now I'm into like the chakra. So consistent body of work, whatever you decide that you want to do, do at least like 10 to 15 pieces of that. So it's just a full body of work, right? That you can focus on, you really get it out. So you can really see the extent of like the variations of whatever you can do, of like putting that body of work together, right? Um, so that it has a consistent theme. Because as you apply to shows or wanna put your work out into the world, whether it's a pe people's homes or into hotels or just spaces, boutiques and, and salons, you're going to want consistency because they might have their own vibe that they're going with, right? And then if you want your artwork to be displayed in that place, you could go from your different series of what resonates with them, right? I'm about ready to put my work in a day spa and I'm really thinking about Ooh, what would, you know, would work there. I'm thinking I have this whole Lotus blooming series that would, that would work, right? The colors go, things like that. So just being consistent with your body of work. Um, so usually bodies of work, have like I said, it's consistent color palette, um, same materials, and even when you are putting your body of work out there, um, when you're applying to shows or magazines or wherever that you're applying to put your work, you want to just show one body of work. Don't go from different series because then it can get very confusing um, because it's it's almost like hard for your your brain to register when there's too much stuff going on. It's really hard when I go into galleries and I see like 
um, too much inconsistency um, or even like art fairs. Just be, um, you want to just have like something that's very cohesive. Okay, so that's body of work. And now I'm going to get into pricing. So once you have your body of work and you want to price, um, I think, well, what I know, I'm not going to say I think, I know this because you really have to know your own relationship with money and start diving deep there because that was one of the things for me as well, Janine, is that when I started my business, I didn't realize my own relationship with money and how much anxiety um, that I had for the money and then thinking that my self-worth was related to it, right? And um, I had to really get clear about how I felt about money and then what I wanted to charge for my work. Because when someone had first asked me, well, how much is that? I would get so much anxiety because I didn't know how to price my work and what I thought was worth, right? So I had to start doing some research. And from what I found is that, I can't even remember the girl's name, but I found her on YouTube and I thought she was really great because she would say, um, price everything by size, like every inch would be a certain amount of money. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. And I did that. So I have different, I have a price guide. Um, I created my own price guide and it says, okay, well, like my four inch paintings are a hundred dollars and then it goes up to my six inch paintings or this much. And then it gets into the thousands of dollars for, for my larger pieces. Right. Um, and I feel very comfortable with that and it's consistent. So I, if I'm I applied in an online gallery and I have my work there, it's consistent with what's on my website as well. So I have this pricing guide and when people question me, well, why is it this much? It's just, well, that's how much I charge. And this is, um, it's by size. And I don't want to say how much time because I could spend a lot of time on a painting, totally hate it. I get to a place that I really love it. Or I might spend like barely any time on my painting um, and it could come out fantastic. And that doesn't, that emotional part or the time part is really non-existent because I've been an artist all my life, right? Um, and just looking at that, oh, she's a great idea. So just looking at like the investment of like going to college or going or just the investment of all the time that I spent I'm, I'm creating, that doesn't matter. Whatever it is, um, time is, is not consistent. It's really, I think it just by the size. And I've also go, I go to a lot of art fairs and I look at other artists that are similar to me. They're doing the similar um, style of work or, you know, doing portrait work because they do a lot of portrait work or abstract pieces and kind of see where they're pricing. And I will keep mine consistent with that as well. So you can also do research um, in that way as well. That makes it stress-free. Yeah, definitely. Um, just knowing your prices right off the bat um, by your sizes, it makes it so much easier, most definitely. But also I think if you know if you do have a lot of that anxiety, just start thinking about your own relationship with money and I can help you. I know it's a little bit deeper work, unless it's a lot deeper work, if you'd like to um, do like a session around that because um, it was a really big eye opener for me when I started healing my, my money monster and getting in touch with uh, my money honey. So that's like a whole lesson in itself if, if you need some healing work around that. Okay. Number nine, I feel like I had to take a big deep breath here. <laughs> okay, so number nine is honor your now. Okay, and I say this because the artists that I've been working with, um, even the artists who do my Art of Manifesting program and they want to manifest into becoming a full-time artist, is that they might not think that they're an artist because they have a full-time job or you know these side gigs and it's like the art is on its side. That's the side hustle. Um, and that's not true. So it doesn't matter where you are at. As long as you are, you know, listening to your soul, listening to your heart and creating, um, that's what's most important. And honor where you're at is be grateful for that job that you have that's bringing you money so that you can buy food or your place to live or 
or anything else, right? And with each baby step that you're putting towards your business, it will grow and you'll start to make those connections and relationships and find more opportunities and just watching it blossom. It just, it takes, it takes time. And when you're starting your business, I, you've got to really think of it like as a long term, you know, it's like anything that you do that you really want to invest in, it's not just going to be a year. I mean, like it's the long haul. It's like, what is my, that, that excites me the most to think about what's my artwork going to look like 20 years from now. You know, you know what experiences of, of putting my art into the world, what is that going to bring me? Right. So think about it for long term. And actually in my artist thriving guide that I have as my online new course, it really does look at, um, you know, how to, you know, create your community, but also how to leave your legacy, you know, looking at that, that big picture of where your art will go. Right. So just honor where you're at right now. Be grateful um, and, and, and it'll grow. It will grow as long as you're putting the baby steps in. And the last one on here, which is uber important, is cultivate confidence. So feeling good about where you're at. 30 years so far. All right, Janine, she's putting it in, putting in the love. I love that. So cultivating confidence of, you know, loving your work, loving what you're doing, and just putting it out there for the world to consume, to love, to appreciate. Um, just feel good for yourself that you're doing it and really let go of any kind of outcome or expectation um, of what other people might say or, or do because it really doesn't matter, right? And you'll find your people. The more you put it out there, you're going to find your people that, that resonate with you. Ah, so if there's any other questions that you have that's coming up for you, please uh, let me know. Um, just to let you know that I do do coaching for creatives, which are, you get two sessions a month. Uh, there's 30 minutes each where we really just like pinpoint where you're at in your business and where you need support. A lot of times it's the structure um, of creating time and being able to balance life. That's where I see most people need that accountability of being able to say, I'm going to do this project and then falling through to get there. So I, I, I hold you accountable and support you um, with that. So you get the two phone calls a month. And the other thing that I have, which is, it's more on your own. It's the um, Artist and Thriving Guide, which is my seven week online course. So you do that yourself. Um, so it has seven modules and it just dives deeper into the work that we're doing here. And then you get two sessions with me. So yes, those are all on my website. Um, I hope you all have a beautiful day. And again, if anything comes up that you have questions about, you're welcome to ask me. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I know that I appreciate all the guidance and support that I got, um, you know, along the way. So I'm hoping this was helpful for you. All right. So if anything else I'm here, let me know. And if you would like to share this with anyone, you are welcome to share the blog post on my website um, or share this video. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my artist page as well so you can share. You can't actually share it from the Creative Soul Online Retreat Group, but you can share it from my artist page. All right. Maricela said it was very helpful. Awesome. Um, and Janine said thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Have a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.